Hoagie, episode 70. I'm here with a legend. I'm here with a goat. So if you don't know, we had to pay homage and get some goats in the, in the you know, in the drip. We got some Tom Brady stuff. We got number 70, a home run hitter, Mark McGuire. Steroids or not, the man was a legend. We got another legend here, my man Ron P. Your host with the most, your favorite podcast host, Ron P. Ron P. TV. Yes, sir. In the building. FGP, Feeling Good Podcast, the podcast your brains wants. Episode 70. We're going to be talking about a lot of stuff, y'all. And this is the only place, the only place in the world, aside from where Ron's at, that you get the exclusive Ron P. Ravioli. You know what I'm saying. Wait, what? So if you don't know, now you know. Oh, oh. The calories, the same. You know what I'm saying? We we done we done tested on the market. She's been banging. <laughs> we wanted to wait until my man was here. And we coming, let's go. <laughs> Ryan P. Ravioli. Oh shit. Hey, we got a couple cans for you to take oh, home. Oh shit. My man is a big, big, hey. big. You know, he doesn't usually get the off brand stuff. Hey, but listen, this is this is big. Like I need to be sponsored by every ravioli Facts. company. Facts. Like, they, you guys owe me money. You're damn right. I made them rich, bro. Hey. Maybe Ravioli's rich, but talk we, to, we, we ain't talk no squares. We ain't no squares, though. We're we, we gonna talk about his passion for uh, for ravioli. Oh, man, <laughs> welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Man, I'm I'm happy to be here, man. It's an uh, honor. Yeah. It's an honor. I'm glad to be here. That's it's, what's up. It's uh, it's been a long time coming. Just knocked out the podcast on uh, Ron P TV. Y'all go check that out. Y'all need to go check that out. What y'all yeah. think about the lack of support? What y'all think about what he said? What we said? What we talked about? That shit was good. Yeah, yeah. A lot of important shit. A lot of important shit was that discussed. You know, and this right here, bro. This is big because like we both doing podcasts and we both you know uniting and it's showing bridging that gap. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's okay for two powerhouses to work together. It don't always have to be competition. Exactly. You know. So yeah. Yes, sir. Y'all, y'all gotta, uh, y'all gotta really listen to some music by this man. I got, a, I got a car. So if you ever, you ever want to, uh, you know, come on down, you can always check it out. Everybody that comes through, they always gonna see this. We got a real finisher, and I did have a uh, Black Bentley Dreams, uh, a CD that was kind of on display to let people know, but it's currently in the car as I had to play that shit on on a car ride. You know, I'm still stuck on this shit. Yeah, this shit's I'm fine. still stuck on this shit. This shit's delicious. Is dope. I've, been, I've been eating Ryan P. Ravioli since uh since I met you, man. So <laughs> so every every uh every, every time I go to the store, I don't even think about anything else besides damn. Whenever I look at ravioli, I think about Ron. I'm like, damn, I wonder if Ron's gonna grab this shit. If he's he, he I, comes here. Can I give you an exclusive? Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna give you some exclusive, bro. I never told nobody this on camera or nothing, so you're getting the, the exclusive. My rap name when I was young, I used to want to call myself Ravioli Ron. Yo, Ravioli Ron. Nobody knows that, so you got the exclusive, bro. Hey, like, y'all heard it here first. Ravioli Ron. You know what I'm saying? But it's Ron P, so I don't get the name twisted. Yeah, Man. but Ravioli Ron. I might, you know what? I might run with that. You, yeah, I might run with Ravioli Ron for a minute. Just to... it's, it's it's a nice little catch, you know. Have yeah. a little, have a have a even if you have a little uh, Ravioli uh, Ron merch merch drop. You know hey. what I'm saying? I'm with that. Don't play. We, we, we need to make some shit. I'll, I'll come up with some shit. We'll, uh, I just off the love. I'll make you some shit. I'll make you some I'm logos. Have, I'm going to have to do a Ravioli Ron single. Yeah. Drop a song about raviolis or something like that. We, we got to tag Chef Boy RD. Chef Boy RD needs to enter the building with the sponsorship. With the sponsorship for real. That yeah. it, it is crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. So you always you always been loving uh, Chef Boy RD? Yeah. Yeah, since I, was, since I could remember. Anything pasta, though. Like, you know, I... I drink V8 on a regular, you know, because I don't drink alcohol or nothing like that. So I drink V8 and tomato juice, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, raviolis, lasagna, spaghetti. Anybody out there who, who know how to make good lasagna or spaghetti, raviolis, and you need a tester, come holler at me. The man is a very, very big ravioli connoisseur, y'all. Y'all don't understand. I think I'm like part Italian or something. He's, like he's low key. I think you're full Italian at this point. At this point, yeah. yeah y'all gotta, y'all gotta take me in now. The he, Italians gotta he, take he, me he, in. He's, he's, ta yeah, he's taken in by him. That you might, you might even be uh, mob, mobster uh, certified. Yeah, 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 big mob, big mob. So, man, what, uh, what got you into doing podcasts? How did, how did you, how did uh, Ron P T V come about? Uh. Because people needed to hear me, man. And the music, you know, the music is only going to reach so many people. You know, you got some people who don't listen to rap music. 
and I'm well, I'm not just a rapper, I'm an artist, but artist. you got some people who don't listen to that kind of music. And I gotta be heard, so hey, you're gonna hear me on this podcast. You know what I'm saying? That's just that's just it. Like I just needed to be heard. I had stuff to say. I had I had to get my message across, you know, so I had to What do you think is the most important message to that uh that you're that you kind of uh focus on? With my podcast? Yeah. Uh, you can't judge people based on appearance. And that's what my podcast do. I showcase personality because, you know, people see see you and they they judge you based on what you what you look like. And then, you know, you come on my show and I just want to say, hey, you know, this guy's humble or this guy's actually funny or this guy's very respectful. You know, don't judge a book by its cover, you know, and I think just being in the entertainment business, that's what happens. You know, whether you're an actor, rapper, whatever, they just judge you on what you put out. You know, a three minute song do not define who a person is. Right. You know, so it's just about showcasing like, hey, you know, give us a chance, you know, open open your minds up, you know, get to know us. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's important. I definitely agree. You know, I think with the with the amount of just people that, you know, they'll hit me up, whether it's like they think I'm a promotion page or whatever. And it's like, hey. I'll definitely check out your music, you know, like, if, and if I like it, you know, I'll definitely share it, yeah. you know, like, but a lot of people, like, uh, how do you feel, how do you feel on the, on the whole idea about you got to buy someone, buy something from someone to support them, to support their business? I mean, if you, if somebody got a business and, you know, you don't necessarily have to purchase from them, you know, there's other ways of support, whether it's just word of mouth, whether it's just, hey, time, you know, just time, you know, if you started something, hey, I ain't got no money, but I got a couple hours, I could help you build this, or I right. got, you know, I'm free tomorrow, maybe I could help you set this up. Just you know? offering. So, yeah, just offering your time. Um, it's not always about money, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I actually, I feel like when you offer everything but money, it's more genuine. Yeah. Because money is just like, here. Yeah. You know, so I feel like when you invest time or just conversation into somebody, you know, I feel like that support is more genuine. It's just like with you, you know, I feel like just the, the time you allow us to engage in conversation is more priceless than anything you could have purchased from me. You know what I'm saying? So it's not always about money, people. Yeah. You know, actually money is, money is almost disrespectful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it's almost like I don't care. You know, it's just like if you see a homeless man on the street and you walk by and you threw five dollars in his bucket and that's it. You didn't stop and engage Talk and just how him. are you doing? Right. You know, yeah, you may have gave me five dollars, but did you do you care to know how I'm doing today? Right. You know what I'm saying? So money is just kinda like a blow off. Like here, leave me alone. Yeah. You know, so you know, I'd rather money's good, don't get me wrong. We we are, you know, we are trying to make some money, but you know, just everything else is is just as important. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that's good that you, that's good that you touch on that because Man, I think I think people people start because I got a buddy. He wants to he wants to start start being an artist. Mm. He's uh, he's actually inspired by uh, Pancho Vela. Okay, so to Pancho. So he's inspired, you know, by Pancho, and he's inspired, you know, by me doing this this podcast and seeing all the artists that are locally that you know there's there is you right. know because I'm like man there's I got like 31 artists that are that are performing at this event on April 10th, but. I barely even tapped in with half of them, you know. I've only done a podcast or, you know, done an interview or anything like that with, like, 14 of them, mm -hmm. you know. So I was like, man, there's, I still have a lot of work to do and, like, getting my name out there and reaching, you know, right. getting people's stories on, on our show. Right. You know, so, like, yeah. It's a process, man. It's a yeah. process. It's a, it's a slow process sometimes, but as long as it's progressing, yeah. you know, hey, that's better than no progression. So, right. Yeah. What, uh, so music. You got you got music on all platforms. Music on all platforms. Uh, dropping music consistently. Uh, I got like ten projects that I'm actually about to just drop consistently back to back to back. But right now I'm just dropping singles. Yeah. Um, I just dropped a single called Wine Glass. That's on all platforms. Um, just 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 check me out. Everything like I'm I'm consistent. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. I definitely uh we got a speaker over there we got uh we got some songs i want to play okay wine glass being one of them um there's a car alarm beat so i've been uh there's a there's this crazy car alarm beat free instrumental okay and 
anybody who's an artist, hey, I, I highly recommend, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, in, engaging in it, trying to trying to attempt it, you know, it's, it's pretty funny. Okay, so it's a challenge? Yeah, it's a little okay. challenge, you know, so, um, n more or less just for fun, but... Sorry. But I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna curate a bunch of clips, you know, okay. and, and it'll be uh, be something that we post and stuff. So all right, it'll be something fun. So I'll uh, I'll let you tap into this. Uh, you can Bluetooth, you can turn the connector. Okay, we're well, doing play some music or something. Yeah, it's uh, UE Boom Two. Uh, you can actually find the uh, instrument instrumental on uh, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's it's one of those songs where you're like, whoa. Okay, what is it? Car alarm beat. Car alarm. <laughs> you're gonna go crazy over this one. Just sound interesting as hell. Oh, it is car alarm type B freestyle, y'all. It it goes nuts. It goes bananas. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh. Yo, back up on the scene. Favorite color red, but I'm about to get green. Got my homie Jacob on my motherfucking team. Got a full four with a motherfucking beam. Drums on my and I'm about to make a scream. Everybody boom, trying to get some cream. Everybody boom. I'ma just feed for the money, I'ma get it. Iced out my lighthouse, moving to Britain. Uh, yeah, Ron P spitting. Uh, yeah, this is not written. All for the top, swear to God that I'm gifted. All for the top, swear to God that I'm different. I came through big truck, I'm whipping. I came through big truck, rim spinning. Everybody know how it is, we winning. Everybody mad, cause your boy did it. Came out the house and I'm getting chicken. Talking birds, yeah, what's the word? Uh, fake haters get served. Still sitting back, working on their nerves. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Went in. Yeah, it's something light. Uh. Hey, that beat. Giving y'all a sample of FGP with a little splash of Ron PTV. Uh. We got ravioli in this thing. Eat that shit up. It's 102 calories. Maybe more. <laughs> I don't know. He's an artist. Let him know. Let him know. All platforms. Get a card. Tap in. Facts. Yeah. Ah, it's fresh, bro. That's fresh. Yeah, that was dope. That was hey, dope. I want to see more people come on here and do that challenge. Yeah, that shit was fire. That shit was fire. Hey, I think I think uh, he he might be in the running right now. That was the hardest one. Ah. That might be the hardest one for sure. That's in the running. That's that's not definitely number one. Bro, what you gonna have to do is just put a whole video out of different clips of people rapping. Yep, so yep. Be, that's, that's what I was thinking. Fresh. That'll be fresh, man. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I told my wife I was like, I gotta buy that beat. I gotta buy that little instrumental whatever the hell that is that's, yeah. that's hilarious yeah i don't know man just music like i don't know me and my brother used to just as kids like something like this we'll sit there and just rap to it all day say stupid yeah random stuff or whatever that's that's what make you sharp and still though just just having fun with music you know what i'm saying and yeah you're perfecting it so talk about family you got a, you a big family you got a big family yeah man did you did you grow up uh brothers and sisters uh, yeah, I got a few brothers, a few sisters. I ain't shouting them out because, <laughs> yeah, I ain't shouting them out. But no, I shout out to my siblings. He said, I live with you long enough. Yeah, I live with you. But no, I shout out to my, my siblings. But yeah, I, uh, I came from not necessarily a big family, but family just oriented. Like, you know, just always having each other back, being there for each other, showing genuine love. You know, uh. One thing about my family that I learned is just like what makes a real genuine family is when they tell you shit you don't want to hear, but you need to hear. Right. You know, a lot of people get offense, offended when they say something you don't want to hear. But just like that, that's what helped me grow to be a, a better person. Yeah. And my family was straightforward. They if they don't like this or you never sugarcoat it, don't sugarcoat it, you know, and, you know, at the moment you don't want to hear something. But as time go on, you're like, I needed to hear that and you apply it. You know, so I come from a straightforward family, so yeah.
So straightforward. They definitely are musically inclined. Where where do you? Oh uh, God, I yeah. seen the episode with your uncle. Yeah. That, that that was pretty dope. I love. I like seeing him play the instrument. Yeah, he uh, you know, shouts out to my uncle. But uh, yeah, everybody in my family either sang or played instruments. Like my mom, my uncles, my grandmother. Did you? Um, do you ever like? Did you see any of them perform? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like. I grew up on it because like, you know, being younger, you know, I see them. They practice in the living room sometimes, and you know, and then they have shows and things like that. I would go to so. And the thing about me is, even though I'm a, I'm an artist, a, a rapper slash, you know, I, I can sing a little bit, etc. I come from a blues soul background, you know. So I was only 13 when I really got into rap. Anything before that was jazz, blues music, and stuff like that. So I came under that era you know yeah. what i'm saying so do you have songs that you would consider that jazz blues vibe i don't i haven't made that song yet to be honest yeah. um i can but i just haven't made that song yet but Man. you know a lot of people want me to just That'd be because, dope. you know the majority of my day when i'm listening to music is not rap yeah. a lot of people would think i'm just listening to rap all day i don't i listen to you know old blues singers like 75 percent of my day you know, so yeah. Who, who's a uh, who's a top five top five local artists right now for you? Top five local artists. Uh, let's see. Uh, Max Hilly. Who? Max Hilly. He from Saginaw. Oh, I got it. I got to tap in. Oh yeah, he he really moving. Yeah, he moving. Uh, my man A Mac. A Mac, yo, I'm always hearing, I'm always hearing uh, his name, always seeing his stuff around the social yep. media. So he doing his thing. Uh, Via the Great, I, I love his music. Yeah, Julian. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's it's crazy because I went to school with him. Uh, we literally, I remember he was dating uh, Monique Alonso, this this chick. Yeah, they still together. Yeah, so like yeah, that, that's yeah. awesome that they're still together. Yeah. I remember he was dating her back in. Uh, Back in like sixth grade. Damn. Yeah. So they, they, I ain't know how far it go back. We yeah, they, they, they've been together. Kids and everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 dope to see. Like, he's got like you know stuff with Fast and the Furious. You know, he's the, yeah. He's he doing his thing. Yeah. He's doing his thing. Shouts out to him. And you guys, you guys uh used to work together. Yeah, we still got you know little things we still got incomplete. We need to finish, you know. But yeah, that's that's my dog. You so know what there saying? might be some. There might be a little, it, a, yeah, a little it's, it's EP a, with uh. Via and uh, yeah, Ron P. We, yeah, we got some stuff, you know what I'm saying, dangling in the air. You know, the, the thing with him, you know, he, he a busy person. Busy. And I'm a busy person. So sometimes just trying to connect and yeah. get, you know what I'm saying, like when he ready, he hit me up like, yo, let's get this done. I'm like, oh, I can't. And right. Then when I reach out to him, he, you know, Schedule's so it's just it's schedules, you know what I'm saying. But, you know, we, we definitely got some stuff pending. You know what I'm saying. Um, We're going to get get that done soon, though. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, let me see. I got two more. Yeah, two more. Uh, fuck it. You know what? My favorite rappers. My top five is God Ron, damn, P, Ron P. Ron P. Damn right. Ron P. Ron P. Ron P. You know what I'm saying? But shouts out to everybody doing their thing, though. You know, I, you know, I, I, I definitely support everybody who you know doing their thing locally and you know trying to get on or whatever. Yeah. I'm not that big headed. You know. Who uh. Who who has been uh, one of your favorite interviews so far that uh, that just kind of just taught you taught you a lot or you know? I like showed... my man Dope Boy AK. Yeah. That's my brother. He'll come on to see. One thing about him, he one of those people who will say things like he he ruffle women's feathers a lot. Yeah. Because he say things that women don't want to hear, but the shit be true sometimes. Right. You know. So I, I love like when he come on there because he like straightforward like, and he'll say stuff that. Granted that I would say, but I don't be on that kind of time. Right, you know not. what I'm saying? So he'd get on there and say something and ruffle women's feathers and you know, he always in Facebook jail and so oh, report his posters. You know, so I like I like when he come on the show, you know what I'm saying? Turn that shit up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we uh we got this we got this uh little twist we're about to add in uh a little podcast shit with, with the wife for like our our Pornhub and Only OnlyFans content. Uh, We're about to have like a little separate, you know, talk show stuff with that. That's what's up. Yeah, so it's just, uh, yeah, it's dope. It's dope. It's just small. Y'all got to get the merch out there. Y'all got to get the. Yeah, we we got a little hub, banner. The hub uh, merch and all of that. We got a little banner. I'll show you. It's pretty dope. But uh, it's coming soon. It's coming soon. Big shit. 
Y'all know the OnlyFans, y'all know it. You know, if you don't, you don't, but hey. And the OnlyFans is a good market. Like, you know, I wait I, I, way I, more money. Yeah, it's a, it's a few girls that I'm working with with the OnlyFans that like, you know, I do pictures and things like that or whatever and interviews and stuff like that, help promote and stuff like that. Yeah. So the OnlyFans is a yeah, shout out to all of y'all doing OnlyFans. Definitely, definitely uh pays pays to have one of those you know what i'm saying whether you whether you just Shit, one one girl she <coughs> she made like fifty thousand one month or whatever and she wasn't even just completely new like she right, was it's crazy like, yeah shit, i'm gonna start selling feet pics or some shit on that shit Man. fifty thousand in a month we got but a you... couple sugar daddies they're uh just send them a couple feet pics here and there and they're satisfied i'm telling not you not too shit. not too aggressive they're not too oppressed they're just hey send me when you can baby <laughs> my wife got my wife got pretty feet you could have sell her feet pictures and shit like all that shit you be you be going to get her she does goes to get some feet done no nah, she know she know she do nails and stuff herself oh, like, shit. You know, yeah she do acrylics and all of that shit. So she's so. getting all the fucking color yeah, she wants yeah she yeah she do that <clears throat> she she stacked up over there that's so. what's up yeah how long y'all been married uh, two years, two and a half years. We two got married years? on Valentine's Day. Hey, good time to good time to uh get married. We see, I don't celebrate Valentine's. That sh that shit just happened. Yeah, I don't celebrate Valentine's Day, not at all. At well, all? But at you, you all. don't celebrate it like even like if she's like, hey, we we going out to nope. dinner? Are we doing some? Nope. No. No. Nope. Let me tell you why. All right. I feel like Valentine's Day, sweetest day. That's the day that you're expected to do something nice. Or she's expecting flowers or to go out to dinner. Like, I bought my wife uh, a car on a Tuesday. Just like, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, she'll come home. I have, like, uh, a bunch of money on the bed and and, and, to, and ought to gift cards, go shopping, random days. Yeah. I feel like it's more genuine. It's more special when it's not expected. Right. You know what I'm saying? I feel like. February 14th is the day people be like, okay, it's February 14th. Where's my flowers? Where's my... Yeah. It's not, it don't feel genuine to yeah. me. Yeah. So when I do stuff for her, extravagant things, it be on random days, not birthdays, not holidays. It be just random. It be a Monday. Right. And I'm like, oh, let's go out to dinner and let's do this. Let's go shopping and give her the, the world. Right. On a regular day. And it's just more genuine because she's like, you don't have to do it. It ain't my birthday. And it's almost, you appreciate it more yeah. when it's not you know, a holiday telling you, you got to do it. You right. know what I'm saying? So that's why I don't celebrate. So a lot of women, when I be telling them that, as soon as I say it, they be like, what? You don't right. celebrate? But then when I, when I break it down, they're like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you, give me, you give me for 365, you ain't got to worry about this right. extra day. Right, 365, what is Valentine's Day? Right. You know what I'm saying? So when we don't do nothing on Valentine's Day. Let's create Day, our own holiday. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when we don't do nothing on Valentine's Day, she cool because she know two weeks ago we just did Right, you know, some. It's not dope. like you probably y'all probably just gonna chill in the house, you know, watch the movies. Even shit. even if it's just like I said, just going shopping out to eat or just running her a bath water and rubbing her feet when she get out. Like I do these massages and stuff, so like you know, just deep tissue massage with oil, hot oil and stuff like that. So even if it is at home, it's still something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Special. So that's yeah. that's real yeah that's yeah. dope so all, all the couples out there make sure make sure you uh you you take some notes man i better be writing this I got, stuff I'm, down i got a mental note right now uh about to get my wife some lotion and get it right after the bath you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah, so i'm telling you shoot put on some music and get it done get it done yes sir yeah that's dope yes, man sir. so you got uh you got a big family you got a big family how do you how do you think uh how do you think it compares to you know the people out there that you know they're maybe they don't have maybe they don't have a, a team or they don't have you know any 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 support how do you how do you think that you know just having a big family helps with that uh for me you know we we talking just like kids and wife yeah don't uh, matter kids wife i mean me personally like if i love you and your family you're my motivation yeah you know whether you're my kids my wife uh a favorite cousin whatever whatever if i love you you're my motivation because you know i'm blessed to be in a situation that some of my family members can't be in right you know i can do some things financially or just just the 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 the, the way that i move i can do certain things that they can't do you know and i want to bring everybody who i love along for that ride you know so if i'm able to go to uh, like I was just talking to my brother. Actually, this was yesterday. 
funny story. Uh, I was in New Mexico, and I went to Carlsbad Caverns. He's he he never been there, you know. He, he never been there. He ain't never been to New Mexico, nothing like that. So, in my mind, I'm like, you know what? I have to get my brother there. I have to I have to show him. You know what I'm saying? This is my older brother. We three years apart, raised by the same people, blood, same mom, and everything. I was fortunate to go to these places. He had he hasn't went. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I just like yo, I gotta I gotta be able to take everybody on a on a trip. You know, so it's just like having big families to me and if I love you it's just motivation to go harder you know I don't want to just enjoy life if the people who I love can't enjoy you yeah. know what I'm saying some of these things you know so even just going to Mexico you know I'm a little dirty dude out it's the it's hood on the dirt, it's on the bucket list talk about Mexico yeah you know I'm a little dirty dude out the hood I'm the only one out my hood ever to go to Mexico you know so stuff like that like it just motivates me like I don't want to just come back and be like, yo, you got to see it over there. It's, you got to do this. I don't want to be that you person. Take I want to, I want to, yeah, I want to be able to be like, you know what? I saw it. They need to see it. And I need to be able to, you know, do that. Because like I said, everybody's not fortunate enough or blessed enough or lucky enough. Right. You know what I'm saying? To even do certain stuff, you know? So I'm just like, yo, I got to, I got to, got to make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Is there a place on your bucket list that you haven't gone yet? Uh, I want to go to Cancun, Mexico. Cancun. So in Mexico, that's that's definitely on the on the bucket list. Yeah, Cancun and Hawaii. Hawaii. Yes. Hawaii. Uh, you know who Justin Moten is? No. Justin Moten. Shout out Justin. Uh, he just got a job in Hawaii. Uh, working oh. working in uh, he like works at the hotels, and he just leveled his way up, up and up and up. You know, was working. He was working in Houston or in uh, Texas, in Florida. Then now he's in uh, Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii. <clears throat> just the the videos and pictures and things I've seen. The people. Yeah, it's, it's nuts. Just beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Like, the you swimming in water that look like drinking water. It's clear. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I need to see that. You know? definitely want to be there. Yeah. Yeah, my buddy Aiden. Uh, he's up there. He works there or lives up there, mm -hmm. and he's always like working on houses and stuff. So he'll be like up on the top of a roof of a house, and it's like in Hawaii. So he's giving you the the, the scenery the, the whole the scenery and it's like oh. yeah and the people the beautiful women and just the i gotta go a gallon yeah. of milk's like nine dollars damn yeah nine dollars shit so we drinking water ladies and gentlemen crazy yeah, yeah. definitely water yeah <laughs> yeah i drink a lot of water anyway though like I'm i drink, die you got to man listen i drink so much remember i tell you i drink like tomato juice and water like that's all i drink like yeah i could drink like a gallon of water or two gallons of water they easy i know they say too much water is bad yeah but like i said i don't but you drink. really gotta like do you gotta get like three to five gallons for it to be bad like i, yeah, I could like, do that though i could do that like i love water so much it's crazy to think that it's bad for you right like so much that it could be bad Right, yeah, I, I be down, especially if it's co some good cold water, which they say cold water bad for you. I need, I need that lukewarm. I need that lukewarm. I mean, cold ice cold water is cool, but I can't chug it. See, I can't do do, do the warm. I mean, like if you just need a quick, my mouth dry. I need a quick sip, yeah. but like just a, a cup of lukewarm, I can't do it. Yeah. I, I need my shit cold. But you know why they say the cold water is bad for you? It's just like if you pour cold water on grease, it stiffens up. Right, and you know it depends on your body intake. Like if you ate some chicken or something like that you know and now you drinking cold water on top of it you know that's clogging your arteries right. and all kinds of stuff like that you know so it's crazy to think yeah, yeah. I, d I just learned the other day uh because my son's got this infection in his eyelids so i didn't even know that that could happen so these eyelids will get like stuck so like in your eye there's like there's like a hole right here and it all connects like up to like right here or some shit and the lady was showing us this picture She's checking his eyes and she's basically showing us like there's a there's a hole up here and a hole up here and like when you cry you know usually your your nose runs mm -hmm. and vice versa like whenever you sneeze it's like it's your meant eyes water a little yeah your yeah. eyes water but it's meant to like it it's meant so like these holes don't aren't open so big that like a whole fucking sneeze will come in your eye mm -hmm. you know okay it's, it's it was just crazy hearing all this shit we were we we had to go to uh when we went to the doctor. They like have never seen nothing this crazy before, so we're sending them a picture of like our kid, and he's got this fucking. It looked like he sneezed, just fucking just leaking out of his eye, and Whoa. and like his eye, like at one point, it would just close shut. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm like, oh fuck. 
my man's gonna be having eye issues. Like, we gotta fucking get him taken care of. So they took him to uh, the shit. They had him taking pictures and all that shit. Like, hey, we 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 never seen nothing this crazy before. Like, we need you to go to Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor is like, you know, this Kellogg Eye Center. I'm like, oh shit, what the fuck? So he's like, you might have to have surgery. I'm like, oh shit. So we go up there and he's like, they're <clears throat> they're doing tests and shit on his eye and. And she was like, let me just explain why this is happening. And I was like, okay, <laughs> run this shit, because I'm, I'm, I'm all ears. You know, she's like, it's a one, four out of a thousand percent. It's like a four percent chance. Out of, it's like le- less than, I don't know, it's like four out of a thousand people get it. And it's literally like, his severity is like the worst that they've ever seen. Oh, shit. Yeah, so like, the people at the Kellogg Center were like, whoa, we need, to t- we need you to send us that picture, you know, like. That's crazy. We've never seen this happen before. Right. And I'm like, holy shit. You know, like we got a fucking alien on our hands. You know, this kid's a fucking one of, you know, just having having this un, unterrible luck. And it's just, that was like one of the things we learned was. Wow. It's crazy. Like, normally, like, me having four kids, everything, like, I, I read up, I learn, I learn about all kinds of things. that. So I've never even heard of that. Like, yeah. that's not, I never even. That's it's, crazy. It's before the well, by the time they're one, usually they fix themselves before their time they're one. Okay. But they say like you know, say he gets another infection after his antibiotics, then they want him to have surgery because he's just right. gonna have. Because your little man, what like five months, four five Three months? Three months, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so he's young. He's just a big turd. Well, looks like he's about nine months. Hope eight it months. all work out, man. Yeah, he's okay. good now. His eyes are open. They're uh, mm-hmm. it's like he gets like a little bit of gook, but it's like you know that's supposed to happen. It's like a twenty one day antibiotics. Right. Okay. But yeah, it's crazy. Just like you said, just having kids, man. You learn, you learn so much shit. Like I'll have one kid sick the next one day, you know, and then we take them to the doctor. Then the next day, they fucking get the next kid sick, and then it's like okay, and then fucking you know, a couple of days later, then you gotta fucking clean mucus and shit out of the fucking baby. Man, you know? I'm telling you, it's always some with kids. Like you know, in our, in our medicine cabinet, like in the bathroom, we got like. All these, like, we just randomly buy, like, we'd be in the store and be like, oh, here's some cough medicine, children's cough medicine, let's just grab it. Grab Nobody, it. Nobody's sick right now, but hey, we gonna need it. Uh, Band-Aids, we both, uh, in both of our cars, we ended up putting first aid kits in both of our cars. Just, you know, having kids, you just never, never know, know when something, you know, so we, yeah, so we, we be prepared, you know. Gotta be. Got to. Got I just, to. we just met this, uh, man, it was... Where, where were we at? We were at uh, a cousin's, my cousin's mom's house, but they had like this canning room. They can, like, I didn't even know that you could like can meat. You could, like cook beef. Cook beef, you, you Who cook it. Who the hell would want to eat canned meat? Oh, it's crazy. It's literally, and it, and it looks just like the same shit. So it, it's crazy. But it's like, they can, they can preserve, uh, you know, meat and cooked meat and, it was crazy. They had a whole whole bunch of stuff. That shit crazy. Yeah, like candy and stuff. Like my wife uh, uh, did it with her grandma, and it's you can do so much like asparagus, carrots, you know, cook. I don't, I don't even know what else you can do. It's about a lot of shit. You can, you can hey. can a lot of shit. Yeah, and speaking of cans, yeah, that Ron P ravioli. It's that Ron P ravioli, man. Hey, who is this? Look at the ass on this. Yeah, she, she she nice, you know. We, uh, is it like Marilyn Monroe or something? Or? I don't even know. I think it's Nicole Aniston. Dan and Nicole. Oh, yeah. okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody loves some titties. Yeah. Titties! You know. Yeah. Ron P. Ravioli. I yeah. can't believe it. Yeah. I used to, I used to tear uh, I used to tear a ramen noodle up when I was a kid. Ravioli. But see, Anything. it's an art to... See, let me give you some game, man. See, it's an art to eating ravioli. You can't just, like, you know... It's it's an art. Like, this shit's strategic. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the stars have to align right when you make these. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, you got to learn how to... See, you got to... It's You could do multiple things with this. You could put it in a pan. You could bake them with cheese on the top. You know what I'm saying? Uh, some people take the rich crackers and crumble those up on top of them or whatever like that. Like, this... It, 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 it'll be a, I'll be here all day showing you the different ways to eat these, man. Yeah. You know, actually, I shouldn't be eating it because I'm actually, I'm actually starting my diet because I'm starting a promo for my new mixtape and I got to be active. I'm going to start performing and all of that. So I shouldn't be eating them right now, but fuck, you know, you got to cheat sometimes. Man, so. Just a little bit. Just a yeah, little just bit. Just a little bit or whatever. So, yeah. Speak, speaking of uh, performing, uh, we're hosting um, volume one. April 10th, 
uh, mm -hmm. Tri City Vintage Flea Market, getting ready to uh, you know plan out. I think in volume two and three and four and maybe even five throughout the summer. And all I know is I need Ron P as a main event at one of them boys. Listen, I know I've been saying that I can't do the first one. But we'll be ready on the second one. So yep. when, when the second one pop off, I'm definitely there performing. Yeah. We're going to turn the crowd all the way up. Because when I perform, like, I be giving it my all. Like, I ain't that. Uh, no, you're going to be like your Ron P up there. Like, right. pay attention. I told you I need your ears when I do whatever I'm doing. So, yeah, definitely I got you on the next one, bro. Next Hell go yeah. around. You know what I'm saying? And I'm dropping all of these projects. So I'm going to have hella music to perform. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're definitely going to have some shit to promote. Um, uh, I'd like to definitely do a follow-up where uh, after, like, yeah. after, you know, I'm sure you're going to be going crazy with, uh, you know, might have to do a month of, month of, month of May. <laughs> month yeah. of May follow-up. Yeah, man. I'd like to say I've been going crazy, like, for the longest, like, with the music or whatever. Like, i just been, you know, and the funny thing is, though, like, you know, I have a following. It's just not around here. Yeah. Sad to say, you know, but... You know, yeah, they know, like, when I, I can easily, when I drop my new project, you know, my last project that I dropped was called Saginaw Zone. Yeah. I sold almost 10,000 copies off of that, and nobody in my own, own hometown, maybe a few people got it, but nobody got that, you know, so I already know, like, and when I did that, I really did that Saginaw Zone mixtape with not a lot of social media presence. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I already know this next part, these next projects that I'm dropping based on the resources and the, the connections I got, you know what I'm saying, like easy, I'm finna try to sell more than that, you know, and a lot of it is streaming now, yeah. you know, and digital downloads and stuff like that, so, yeah, I'm finna turn up, man, like I got a project called Salute the Real coming out, um, that's, that's the next project that's actually about to drop, whatever, so, yeah, that, that one gonna do some numbers. Where do you, where do you think that your music inspiration comes from? Uh, day-to-day -day life. Yeah. You know, family. Is friends. there is there a certain artist that you enjoy a sound and or a certain you know, certain artist that, you know, the way they tell us tell a story in a, in a in a song or not really I mean I'm a fan of everybody, but when it comes to me creating music, I'm I only can be inspired by myself because yeah. I'm telling my story or things that I've been through and you know me having a front row seat to these things, I can tell it more accurately. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then it's effortlessly because I don't have to boggle my brain to talk about something that I've actually been through. Right. You know what I'm saying? So just when it, actually, you know, the funny thing is when I'm in mixtape mode, when I'm working on a project, I actually tune everything out. Like I don't listen to the radio. I don't listen to music. I don't, It'd be like a year later, and they'd be like, "You ain't heard the song that Drake dropped?" And I'm like, "No, it's like, man, this song is old, and I've just now right. getting on to it because, like, I just tunnel vision when I'm in like work mode because I don't want my sound. And sometimes as an artist, it can accidentally happen. I don't want my sound to get influenced by you know, and it starts sounding like other people. Right, right. Oh, Always have that, that unique sound. Yeah. So I try to like you know stay focused in my lane so if i do drop a song and it sounds like a song drake did it's not because i listened to it it's just a it coincidence that's, that's got a certified banger on it right you know what i'm saying so yeah that's how i be when i'm when i'm in work mode i just tune everything out so say you about to make a crazy song mm -hmm. it's a friday night mm -hmm. you get in the studio no one around mm -hmm. you playing you playing uh, the instrumental first and getting lyrics to it or you got you writing the lyrics and then uh, find something to match it either or so it just thoughts are sporadic sometimes i sit down and i just make up a whole song in my head lyrics and i have like a beat in my head and then i have to go find that beat or find someone to make me that beat that sound like that in my head right you know what i'm saying so sometimes you know i might hear a beat i turn on the beat and i might just like start building around it or sometimes i might just acapella you know what i'm saying i'm not a big writer like when i make songs i'm not i don't write you know what i'm saying a lot of people say that but like i really don't write and so, at all no i mean like th the only time that i would write a song is like say for example i got the thought in my head and i know i can't record it for a couple days right then i might be like okay let me you write this it down. down but when i'm in the studio 95 percent of my songs is there's no paper trail yeah you know i listen to the beat i do the lyrics in my head i think i and then i just kind of lay it down piece by piece 
And, you know, I just actually just put a little video out on Facebook today, yesterday, today, of me working on the song, you know what I'm saying, and building it. Or whatever. Yeah, there was there was one I watched, uh, I don't know when it was, but it was about, it was, I think you were talking about it when you first came up in. Oh, okay, yeah, like, well, no, this one I just put out today. I just put this out today. So another one today. Yeah, just put it out okay. today, actually, and it's just, it shows, like, a legit process of, I love it. you know, me creating. I love watching it. It's like, oh, yeah. like, you'll be like, all right, I know it sounds a little funny right now, you know, yeah, but let, yeah. let me, let me just, you know, let me just yeah, show you. Yeah, that's the old one. Yeah, that's, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, I just put one out today, and it just shows, like, I genuinely do it, like, off the top. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then I go back and edit it and mix it and come out come out good, you know? Right. Yeah. I, I, li I like the way that shit sounds. Appreciate it. What do you What do you think uh, is your favorite song that you've done? Or maybe you got a couple. You probably got a couple. I'm going to be honest, man. Like, like every... if, you had, if you had five songs, five songs you would, you would, you would put in there. Or maybe I can't, I can't even do it. It's like picking your favorite kid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I can't even do it. In this. I can do that easily right now. I can do that easily. Right, right now. My, my my son is a whiner. My son is a whiner. And I can't understand my, my Sophia and just Amelia. It's just a help. Yeah, see, you, but see, it's the early stage. Wait until they get older. Right, then right, it's going right. to be harder, especially when their personalities form right. and stuff. But they're like, all of my songs, this sounds cliche, but like, they all just mean something to me because when I was making them, and just you know what I'm saying just I don't know just I can't I can't pick them you know and they all just got meaning to me even the goofy songs I do it's just I don't know I feel so like it's a part of, of it's a part of me so it's just like whether it's a stupid song or a real life song or cl a club song I gave I gave a piece of me to make that song right so it's 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 me and all, all of those songs so it's like hard to pick from so I can't you know what I'm saying? Got a lot of babies, man. He's got a lot of babies. Y'all better check them things out. If you yeah. don't know, now you know. Ron P is in this motherfucking thing. Episode 70. Feeling Big good. old cartel leader. Feeling good podcast. Man. Man, hey, listen. I don't know if you have people on there or whatever. Don't come on this show talking that cartel talk because, like, I'm official with it. See, that the thing, a lot of people don't understand when I say MEB is a cartel, what that means. And a lot of people, when they see me out, like, they'll see the brand of what is MEB. And yeah. I, I tell old ladies and stuff like that, oh, what is that? Or what are, it's a cartel. And the reason why I say it's a cartel is because I'm genuinely connected. I'm not no drug dealer, so let me clarify that. You yeah, know? yeah. But being a, with a cartel is supported by a group of people who got my back and allow me to move how I move around. You know what I'm saying? And they support what I do or whatever. So the whole cartel, like that's, it's an official cartel, so you know it's it's different kind of cartels. Yeah. You know, so everyone when you think when you think of cartel, you instantly think of drug dealers and kilos and murders and stuff like right. that. But a cartel is just like a conglomerate of people who got my back and we ain't for no games. You know right. what I'm saying? So we, we, you know we're positive, we're positive uh, movement. You know, even though it say M E B, M E B, you know. The slogan is, if it can bleed, you can kill it. Right. So we're killing the game, you know. So it's not necessarily, you know, we don't promote violence. And it's not about nothing like that. But it's just like a group of people who, you know, we move You're like confident. the military. We, we, we militant, you know. And we just, we stay in our lane. We don't bother nobody. We support everybody. We just don't cross the gun line. Yeah. You know, so that's all it is. So when you come on here, if you, if you, anybody saying cartel this or, you know, blah, blah, I'm a, I'm a question you on it and you got to be able to stand on it. Yeah. You know, because I don't like, one thing I don't like. Well, this is, is no cap TV. So like, yeah, we, like, we got, we got to check them if it, if we think there might be, uh, I don't, you know. I don't want people come on here and be fake. Like it's okay people to be yourself. It's, it's okay to allow people to know who you really are. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not the hardest gangster harper. You see how happy I got about these raviolis. Like it's I'm like, humble. You know, but at the same time, I think people just need to allow they self, allow people to get to know who they really are. Don't try to put on a facade and all of this stuff. So, like I said, when I'm saying cartel this, it's not because I think I'm tough and I'm hard and all of that. I'm humble. Like I told you before, I like watching Keenan and Kale and Nickelodeon and stuff. Like, I'm, right. you know, but, you know, I just stand on, you know, that cartel stuff. So, I take it serious. I don't like when people, t you was in the military. Yeah. That's like somebody who wasn't in the military walking around wearing armies 
army uh, army outfit. Call him stole, and, stolen and, valor. You know what I'm saying? And and that you know what I'm saying? It's kind of offensive to you because you really was in the army. What for seven years? Yeah, almost seven. You know, so when you see somebody who portraying something that you really been through or something you stand on, it's just like I can't respect you. Yeah. You know, so that's why you know I said that about that. So if you are cartel this or if you want to cartel, that's fine. You know, but just be for real about it. Like, don't just say it because it sounds good. Right. You know, no affiliations at all with uh, with cartel or anything like that. So it's clear. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. FUP. You know what I'm saying? You try to feel good on this thing. That's 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 always my goal. It's always my goal. Um, my man doesn't. Uh, he's not a smoker. He's not a drinker. You know, so I wanted to, you know, let him know, like, hey, I, I support you. I support you. I support that shit, you know? So, was, you know, and I appreciate that, bro. But if you wanted to roll up, like I said, no, it no. don't bother me yeah. at all. No, but. no, I'm good. I'm good. Um, Talk about Saginaw, man. So, uh, you are born in Saginaw? That dirty-ass place. No. <laughs> talk, talk, talk about, you know, like, what, what does being from Saginaw mean to you? I love Saginaw. You know, Saginaw is my heart because it, it birthed me. It taught me the do's, the don't, the who's, the, the you know, it, it it taught you. And even though you've been in messed up situations in that city, you still find a way to find the positive in it. Yeah. You know, I've been through some of the worst stuff in that city, but as I got older, I'm like, I needed to go through that. So now I could teach my kids, you know, how to maneuver or I can you know, learn from experiences, you know, and and grow from it you know i believe in taking every negative and trying to find the positive in it because it's always a positive in every negative right you know what i'm saying so you know the city i love the city a lot of good times a lot of, a lot of bad times you know but overall you know it's just anywhere you just got to take what you go through and just use it as a learning experience and you know so saginaw was just one big learning experience it's always going to be home you know yeah. that's why my last project was called saginaw zone you know because you know i'm a, a product of what the city birthed but i didn't become a prisoner of it right you know what i'm saying so yeah do you feel like there's still do you feel like there's still something you still got you still got a lot to say heck yeah yeah i'm i don't think i would ever as long as I'm alive, I will never not have nothing to say because yeah. every day when you wake up, it's something new. Whether it's something with the family, whether it's war, whether it's, you know, uh, the economy, whether it's, it's always, every day you wake up, it's always something to address. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So as long as life is going on, I'm going to always have something to that's, talk about. That's, that's you know? beautifully said. Yeah. Chef's kiss on that one. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so Chef Boy RP. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, like even with my kids, like every day is something new. We lost my daughter. Uh, not lost her, like she died or nothing, but we lost her in the house, couldn't find her. My three year old couldn't find her. This little little dork, we found her hiding in the trash can in the kitchen. Oh shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So the most odd, obscure places. 13 gallon trash can but my daughter she's so tiny and yeah she hiding in the trash can she, i actually ended was, up getting a picture she of was it. committed yeah yeah her little butt you know so just like waking up every day you know your kids is doing something different right and yeah so always yeah that's 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 a good point that's a good point yeah We're always gonna have something to address yeah yeah what's uh what's a favorite what's a favorite uh go-to in uh Saigon? in the house i'm gonna be honest like anybody who know me i'm a i'm a homebody for the most part i don't like being out too much like i i for for a long time i was borderline an introvert like i didn't like being around a bunch of people i didn't like going places um you know so even in my city i i was like an a and b type person i would only go somewhere if i need to go i yeah. was never just like out enjoying the city and running around right. and stuff like that you know so i mean i mean it's not really too many places that i personally just like going you know as far as like out to eat or stuff like that you know i mean that's just me i'm not not saying that there's not places yeah, yeah. it's just me personally i just you rather cook at the crib i rather be at the crib and you know what i'm saying or 
That's where the know? real Applebee's is at. Right. That's yeah, where the real yeah. cook is at. You know, that's why, like, you know, if you've been to the crib, like, that's why I got everything at home so I don't have to You don't to have go to leave. Out. Yeah, you know. But, I mean, I'll go out if I need to. But yeah. It's, I can't just off the top be like, yo, you got to, when you come to Saginaw, you got to, nah. Yeah, we've had, uh, I think, Right Spot uh, by Blue Moon, somebody told me about. Her family owns that one. Um, I've been I've been all over Tony's. Tony's been, a lot of people talk okay, about Tony's. Okay, I rock with Tony's. I haven't I been there. I need, to, I need to go there. Not Grandpa Tony. It's a difference between yeah. Grandpa Tony's and Tony's. Yep. You know, shouts out to Tony's. Now, that steak and cheese box used to me. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, uh, Tony's, yeah, shouts out to Tony's. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Shouts out to Tony's. I rock with Tony's. Bring her in. I've had uh, people say about uh, bring her in. People man. like the breakfast oh, up there. Yeah, bring her in. Yeah, they, they ain't had that in a while, though. Yeah, I think the I think the best breakfast burrito I've ever had was at Sonic. It was the ultimate, loaded, ultimate so meat and cheese. we ain't got no Sonic, though. No, nah, you got you to gotta travel a little bit. But this was when I was in the military. Yeah, I'm going to say, yeah. I'm going to say I ain't had Sonic, like, in El Paso when I was in Texas, like, man the food that's where i miss like the food in different places you know yeah. what i'm saying like around here like they don't have a water burger around here right they don't have like cookout right you know or jack in a box you know stuff like that so i'm i miss like that's why i like different places because you know just the food is different you know what i'm saying so but it's straight shouts out to everything around here i'm actually going cocoa locals after i get up out of here hey yeah yeah i'm starving i'm starving i'm ready to eat myself Man, yeah, I'm finna get that uh, steak fajita quesadilla. Steak fajita? Steak fajita oh, quesadilla. Shit. Mean. I'm trying to think what my brother and sister be getting. I fucked up. I got, uh, I got, I thought the tamales about to be slapping. Like, I've, I've heard people talk about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, get the tamale meal. Get the tamale meal. It's fire. Man, I feel like I got robbed. I feel like Everybody I paid, I feel like I paid a dozen, I paid a dozen dollars, I, I paid the price for a dozen tamales and I got three. You know, I was, oh, I was shit. upset. I was highly upset. See, tamales, if you're going to go, if you're going to get tamales, you got to go to, like, the official Mexicans to make those. Yeah. Like, you can't go to, like... I got I to gotta shout out before we before we call some uh, tamale making outs. Shout out Nano Smith's mom and shout out Juan Rodriguez. Both make some phenomenal tamales. And if you don't want to, like, you don't want to go there, go to Jack's. Jack's is underrated. Jack's, uh -huh. Jack's has got... Like the Jack's Meat Market, mm -hmm. they got a dozen. You literally heat it up for a minute ten. Whoo! Two minutes. Oh, you get three, four tamales at once. See, I gotta see when I get the tamales, I gotta get the beef ones because I don't eat, I don't eat pork. So yeah. The beef ones. Yeah, they got they beef. Be they got beef ones that got hot, spicy. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, it's I'm fire. not gonna let Cher know. Yeah, she, definitely you know, recommend trying that. Hardcore with her Mexicanness. She like her menudo, her her tamales, her all that flautas, all. That. Yeah. yeah, the flaco tacos, the the bur bur burros, burros. I don't burros, even know. The, I know what you're talking those about. Those are those. Burros. I need to. I need to. She made street tacos, uh, like not that long ago. Them was. I mean, you ever had street tacos? Yeah, but I mean, I I could always eat some more. Yeah, she she made some of those. And them was. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to come on for dinner night, man. Yeah, like no, like enchilada was, night. You gotta come over. Like her enchiladas be mean. Yeah, same with my wife's. Yeah, enchiladas be mean. You gotta come through. Next time she makes something, I'm gonna call you over. Yeah. With the rice and the whole. Yeah, the one the one meal I was telling him about was that jerk chicken. That thing, whoo! Yeah, out of this world. I paid forty dollars for that plate. Yeah, man, I gotta I gotta get y'all gotta get me right with the jerk chicken. Yeah, man. it's 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 so fire. We got uh, only I think only like one or two people have tried it, you know, and that's that's just saying because they they've never been around while we made it. It's rare. Never gets never gets uh, offered up. If you if you're there, luckily to get some food. You are blessed. You are blessed. Yeah, I'm about, I'm about to get my jerk chicken game up. But yeah, let's let's play a song for him. Uh, what, what song are we playing? What my? Uh, we can play I'm one, Yeah, let's play. Uh, yeah, let's play wine glass, and then uh, so you can uh, give give him a little uh, playlist for him. Uh, I do not I do not own the rights to this music. It's my man Ron PTV. I own the rights to it. All of my stuff is purchasey. That's another thing. See, people come on, and I'm not I'm not shitting on no nobody because I've done it before. But people get these beats off of YouTube and they just rap on them and they, they try to stream them and they can't stream them or see any revenue from it because they don't own the rights. Even if they say free, yeah, you don't own it. So like, you know, you have to start purchasing. So all of my artists out there, if you're serious about your music and you're ready to make some money, 
if you get the beat off of YouTube, go in the description and that person who made that beat, the information is there. You can lease the beat or purchase the beat and own the rights to it. But, you know, if you just downloading and rapping over it, you, you right. know, you're going to get flagged when you try to do anything. So, right. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's good to know. Uh, I tell a lot of artists, man, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a, there's a couple people out here that are doing podcasts that I, they need to check out. You know, one of them is Ron PV TV, and the other one is uh, Meets the Goat. You know, these are these are two of the, the podcasts aside aside from Feeling Good podcasts that you know what I'm saying I think, and not not even in the in the way because I think that all three shows offer a different sense of support. You know what I'm saying a different sense of like what they can offer. You know like. You might come on FGP and it might be we just we just turn this bitch up and I'm you know I'm I'm a gas it, I'm a gas it up as you know best I can hit up a follow up but you really might you know come on to Rock PTV and you could really really elevate if you're an artist you know what I'm saying like it's the grocery store effect bro like with the podcast or the music it's the gro grocery store effect like you know I might go to Jacks to get my vegetables but I might go over to Kroger's to get some meat and I might go to Myers to because they have great bread right. you know so there's something for everybody and you get something different from everybody so with my podcast they may get take this from it yours they may take that means that you know so yep. like it's, it's something out there for everybody you know so it's, yeah. def it's definitely needed though like people people out here not supporting and we need to change that shit you know like Go run the music up, you know, go run the go, go run the sound up, you know, like I like I've told Ron, you know, like I might not be fully tapped in with your music, but man, when it comes to anything else you're doing, I'm I'm on it. You know, anything anything I can do. And that's prime example what I mean. Like I I got my hands on so many different things because I need to be heard. So you didn't find me through the music, you found me through the podcast, but you still found me. Yeah. You know, so that's why sometimes being an artist is not enough because my music didn't reach you yet yeah you know but the podcast did now that the podcast reached you now i can open your ears like hey you yeah. fuck with me check out my music now yep. you know what i'm saying so you know that's why it's important to do different things like i have my own merch now so you know if you haven't heard me through the music or heard me through the podcast oh i found these at your shirts right p oh you're a rapper oh you know and then it opens the yep. door so that's why like i gotta have my hands in so somebody somebody wants to buy a shirt, they want to buy a hoodie, they want to buy a hat. Where can they go? Well, you know? right now we building the website or whatever, so people can actually go strictly to the. Um, I own the domain name, but I'm not gonna put that out there yet. But uh, you know, people will be able to purchase um, on the website when we get the site up and just buy all of the merch. I got hats, uh, sweatsuits, jogging suits, shirts, and all that um, stuff for the women as well. And then, uh, but right now. Um, CEO Ryan P at gmail.com or any of my social medias, you know, uh, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Ryan P, all of that media. You can hit you got me Snapchat. up on that. You know, we have a hotline number 989-272-8035. You know, you can hit me on there and hey, I'm you, you, you can get to work, you know, but right now, you know, just I got so much stuff going on or whatever so the site will be up soon hopefully within like the next month and a half yeah yeah, yeah i'm uh that's one thing that i've uh i started i started getting a little bit better at with building websites in this past this past like six months so if you ever need help okay. like, i can knock that shit out in a day we could we could be up and running just... hey say you know when the camera go off that's when we really get to work so yeah you, yeah we could yeah we we'll, we'll chop it up about that yeah. for sure but yeah, you, some music or whatever. Yeah, play, song. yeah, definitely play uh, some music for us. <laughs> this song right now, I'm gonna play. It's a, uh, it's streaming on all platforms, and it's called. Um, yeah, I forget what it's called. The stupid dope fresh move or whatever. Like, it, actually, the song is called Fresh, but I call it stupid dope fresh move. But it's an old hip hop inspired song. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's like a boom pack type. Yeah, beat. but yeah, I spazzed on it though. Hey, I like that. Oh. Ron P, man, make sure you go Yo, check him out. Episode seventy. I'm gonna like, leave all his info you gotta in go, there. You gotta go old hip hop on it. Like I need the, I need the eight ball jacket. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I just got done watching. Y'all ain't got no eight ball jackets. You know the saying? old eight ball or the cross colors. The, man, the I need old the boom cross box colors. on my shoulder for this one. I have to see pictures for references. Uh, oh. Yeah.
you know I'm kicking that shit. shit. You know I'm getting my chips, I'm trying to get rich, I'm talking about dick. Uh. These niggas trying to play, you know I don't play because playing for kids. Yep. And if I'm playing the game, I'm playing to take whatever is his. Uh. I'm trying to do it big like pop, put my kids in the drop, play with the kid and get dropped. You and them kids can get shot, I ain't stopping, you know how I'm rocking. Yeah. I ran up in this crib all black wearing a stocking, uh. pop that boy stocking. Stockin'. Looking like Christmas, how I filled up that stocking. Merry Christmas, how I'm rocking. We're jumping and stuffing and bumping and bumping the work, so we punch and get out of there. Yeah. We trying to be covered in diamonds, so we can look just like the guy who made rockaway. Let that go over your head a minute. I was selling Flintstones before there was a friend in one. But I'm from the sag, I got a bag, I had to get my Skrilla. Always screaming, there is no limit like I'm Percy Miller. And I persevere with perky killers, I ain't talking perkies. I am not a jerky, not a junkie. You and all your niggas flunkies, I'ma keep it funky. Huh? These lame niggas ain't ready for me. A bad bitch makes spaghetti for me. My homeboy got the fetty for me. It's a cartel, yeah, I said it, homie. You disrespect to get with it, homie. It's MEB, no the letters, homie. It ain't no one who do it better, homie. If a nigga got beef, he can get beef in, get some macaroni. Try to play, keep the strap on me. You know I ride with the back of homie. You ain't trying to do good. Had to catch my breath, cause they thought my soul left. But I'm still at my best, and they know my clothes fresh. From the bones to the flesh, niggas know I'm sold at. Take a picture, all black, camera splash, Kodak. No, this the Kodak, cold red or cold black. Chopper splash didn't last, watch his line go flat. Flat line like that. Matter of fact, it's a rap. When they rap, they don't and spit I it like that. Like Fall back, take. gon' collapse. Knock his ass off the map. With the Mac, it's a rap. I'm a gift, I'm the pimp. You the bitch with my racks. Take this shit to Iraq. When I rap, I'm so out of here. Lay on my back, and she ride me till I'm out of here. Making faces and all that. Hit once, don't call back. Press one if you really want to receive a call back. You requested a call from Rob P. The Don, and I'm here to fuck on you and your mom. I bet you won't ask for a call back from now on. I wait for the dial tone. Sheesh, I'm to pick up. You know I'm out here grinding, trying to get my change up. I never. Yeah, that was, oh my bad, my bad. Yeah, that shit was fire. But yeah, y'all could go stream that or whatever, hear the whole thing or whatever. Yeah, That's check on that all one out. Platforms, you know what I'm saying? It's called Fresh. 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 Is yeah, it a fresh. F R E S or a P H? No, just F. F R E S. Hey, yeah. make sure you go check that one out. That one, that one was yeah. hard. That one. It was just some old. Actually, I was watching um the movie Juice. Like I said, there's an old '90s vibe, yeah. and Tupac I'm just yeah. I had to, I had to, you know what I'm saying, do that. But yeah, man, uh, when you get the, uh... You snapped on that. The, uh... Dang, my bad, bro. The, um, the old school cross colors and jackets and stuff like that. That That's... I buy all of that kind of stuff, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, I, I, had to, I had to send you some pictures. My brother got some old cross colors and... I, I, think I know you got a bunch of the uh, what's the sweats? The the uh, the, the like the windbreak, the when you walk it, sh, 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 those, oh, the, the, the track wind, suits, the track suits, yeah, yeah those is coming back. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I do that. Some yeah, high tops. Yeah, we, we have a few tracks. You were you wear like an extra large? Nah, man, no extra large. I appreciate it though. What's wrong with you, man? No, man, I, 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 it's a, I don't know. No, no. <laughs> yeah, hey, nah, well, yeah. It. But yeah, so I'll have to. Uh, you have to let me know the size on on, on camera. You know what I'm saying? Let me yeah. let me know. Uh, yeah. Then my son though, I'm, we gonna talk about him. Yeah, though. the like, sneaker fresh. Yeah. Hey, I'll I'll, uh, I'll always tag What's the sneaker. What's up over there though? I've been looking at them. You look at some vapes or something. Oh, those uh those are the custom jersey plug shoes. Oh. Nine eight nine jersey plug. Uh, I got a uh I got a great artist, Michael D. Charo. If y'all ever need anything uh, customized, painted, shoes wise, the man's a genius. The man's very very talented it'll take you know say you want to uh you know what i wanted was i just wanted the display shoes you know of our of our our businesses you know so family overall 99 jersey plug like the I old just, retro oh shit yeah those are sick y'all don't think nobody get rid of those boys if you run across those hold on to it bro yeah that's crazy don't, don't pop it that's crazy. That's that's early. That eight, that eight ball goes nuts. That's uh, uh late eighties, early nineties, right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, or like the cross colors. Let's see. Yeah, that's that true vintage that I like. That's that. That's that's the good stuff. What uh, what was your like? Did you did you fuck with jerseys? Did you uh, was there one thing that you always remember growing up that you like? Um. We we kept it simple, you know. Where I'm from, like Dickies, like Dickies and Air Forces. That's just all we wore. You right. know what I'm saying? Uh, it was a Dickie factory in Saginaw. Oh shit! Yeah, it's the Dick the Dickie factories, and I literally went in there, then bought every Dickie piece of merch that they produced or whatever. You know, I've I've had every color Dickie overalls, just the plain T-shirts. Um. 
I went like my whole uh, high school, my uh, middle school year. Um, if it was a plain T-shirt, it had to have the Dickie logo on the, oh, on the corner. Um, yeah, only thing I never did was Dickie shoes. So my whole growing up was Dickie Air Forces. That's yeah. all I wore. I had every Air Force, uh, every Dickies. That's so, what. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So man, that shit fire. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. The uh, the coveralls go go crazy. Listen, we was thugging with them. We had the. You know, you gotta have the one strap yep, up one or whatever, one shoulder or, or you just have both of them down with the flap in the front or whatever. Like, yeah, we was we was thugging with the dickies. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? the only thing is like, we would buy uh, all white Air Forces like three times a month because the dickies would bleed on your forces. Oh damn! Yeah, so like if you got like that bright red, I even put it in the song, guys. Like all red dickies left red stains on the tongue. Um, the green ones, the blue dickies, they were all stained their Air Forces. So we was running through Air Forces. And I even put in, I'm about to play the song. It's like we was buying Air Force Ones before Nelly made the song Red Dicky Outfits Left Red Stains on the Tongue. You know what I'm saying? So, like, before Nelly came out with that song, we was buying Air Forces. And this was back when Air Forces was only like $60, $70 a pair. Right. And then when Nelly came out, you couldn't find a pair for less than $100. Right. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. So he, blew, he blew that shit the fuck he up. He blew it up, and I was mad about it because we was going, like I said, we, all was, blew that shit we, up. Was, we was, no, not even that. It was just he made the price go up because, like I told you, we was buying three pair of all white Air Forces a month. Yeah. You know, so when the price went up, we was like, nah, I'm about to just cop like, we cop a pair of all white ones. But see, the thing is. You never fuck with the black? Oh, yeah, we call those the kick those. Yeah. Yeah, you kick in those. Kick in those. Yeah, yeah. You, I, to, to this day, I still cop the all black Air Forces. Because you could just beat them up. Yeah, not even. I I was fresh with my shoes though. Yeah. I, I never. I got shoes that I I will have for like even now. I got shoes that if I put them on, people are like, oh, them new. When you get those, for like three At years ago, like five years ago. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. even like I'm wearing some these some hoop. These my hoopty feelers right here. Hold on. Oh, this is a, that's a fire. Like these right here. How old you think these is? She was like a good ten years. Probably. Uh, no, they ain't that old. Uh. They still look good. They, they like five years. <laughs> he said no. They look good. No, I was they, saying they, that they, they got a vintage look to them. They got vintage look. To oh them. yeah, no. They but these are, these are a few years old. They, they, they don't, don't look, look beat. They you've worn them for ten years. Yeah, like they they not just jacked up like that. And I've had them for you know what I'm saying. Like I got Jordans and stuff that I I don't know. I just think like because I grew up poor. Yeah. So I just was like, yo, I want to be able to buy stuff even if I don't wear it. I want to just be able to have stuff. Like, I want to be able to know I have it there. Right. Because I wasn't able to have it when I was younger. So I'd be like, yo, I'm going to just buy all of this stuff. And if, if I wear it, cool. If I don't, cool. But I just want to know it's there. So right. if I do decide to get fresh, it's there. So just with the shoes, you know, like, I always, like, love shoes and stuff. But now it's just like, I just want to buy it because I can and I deserve it. Right. And, uh, you know, so, yeah. Gotta 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 spend the money if you're making it. Yeah, you gotta, gotta enjoy gotta, it. Yeah, exactly. People kid me. I saw a girl, and uh, she was a dancer. She was a doctor dancer, and she had all of her money, and she put it in the bathtub, and she was washing it. And then after she was washing it, she put it in the dryer. And after it came out the dryer, she ironed it. And I'm just like, it's money. It's made to be spent. Right. Like, what are you? You know, like, why are you doing this? Like, maybe because it was dirty. Even if it was, it's money don't have owners, it just have spenders. Right. Spenders. Maybe so, she's maybe because it's like COVID and shit. It's you you you're not holding on to it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if you got money and you need to wash, just put it in the bank. You don't need to have it. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't see why she had to wash the money unless it's something that it's different. Like oh, I just bought a shirt from somebody. I'm gonna wash it, but because I'm gonna wear it, I'm gonna actually be money. You're not just gonna be dealing with money a lot right. you know what i'm saying you either gonna spend it or put it in the bank right. you know what i'm saying so it just didn't make sense like you know you got to spend your money like money is made to be spent and if you're gonna stash some money stash it like you know right. i don't care if my money had mud on it i'm not gonna be walking around holding it all day right so it don't matter if it's clean or dirty throw it in the bank right so but i don't like walking with cash i'm a credit card type of guy right you know I definitely like a debit card, just just in case I lose some money that I ain't yeah. fucking liable to fucking get it get it insured and. Man, you know how much money? Listen, I lose <clears throat> so much money just in my car because like when you, when your pockets is open and money fall like between your seats sometimes. Yeah. 
they don't even know I done found all kinds of money in my in my car just because I ain't know I lost it. Mine's my dryer. I find a lot of money in my dryer. The dryer is a, a money hungry yeah. robber. Like it take your. It'll money. give it back though. It'll give it back. Yeah. Hopefully all of it, but. Yeah. But I've, def- I've definitely come across. I'm like, fuck! I lost. I, was, I left some shit in my pockets. Yeah, I'll find it when I get it. We having an issue with our dryer right now because it, it like it eats one sock. What? Yeah, like if you put two in there for some reason, you never get the other one back. What? It's weird. Like you put a whole load of laundry. You got a real deal laundry monster in this shit. For real, like look, you be like, and when it comes to socks, like I'm a care, like I love character socks. I don't just do all white. Right, socks. right. All of my socks, so I make sure I'm like, okay, I got both of them. Oh if, man, I'm, I'm so, the opposite. Oh, uh, you just be throwing your stuff in. Yeah, I'll, I'll have avocado sock on one foot. I'll have a nachos and then burrito sock on uh, the I other. See. Hey, we turn this bitch up with nachos, burritos, and avocados. Hey, Doug, but they, you want to get both of them back regardless. But both of them, you do want them. That that is a good man, feeling when you got them both. You get all of the clothes out the washer, and one sock always missing. I don't know. That is that is that is a real shitty feeling. That's why I'm like, I do love my Nike socks, black Nike socks. Oh yeah, perfect. I don't know, but it's something about black Nike socks hooping the nose. They just make you jump feel higher. Something. Yeah, it's something like yeah, like proving a jump higher. I will, I will say that the black Nike socks playing basketball in them is something about them. Those and the uh the, the, the black and red Jordan socks. It's something about. When you playing basketball, I'm a big basketball person. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You you play ball? Man. Where you where you play at? I I, I played I played for Saginaw High for like my freshman year, but I wasn't able. To, I got into some stuff or whatever, so I wasn't able to play. But like basketball is my passion. Like next to music, I love playing basketball. And people see me big as I am, they will automatically be like, "You should be playing football." No, nah. I hate football. I don't watch football. I play it on a, a video game, but like I hate watching football. I won't play football. Uh, my coaches used to be mad at me in school because they'd be like, big as you is, we could get you a scholarship on your size alone. You need to be playing football. And I'm like, I don't like, I don't have a passion for football. Right. But basketball, you know, I have so, my ball control is crazy. I'm not just saying that. Like, I'm I'm good. Even though I'm big, I'm six foot, I'm six foot four, people automatically would want to put me at the center spot. But when you see how fast I am in my ball control, you're like, oh, he can actually. Magic was six five. But yeah, but see, I'm big, like you know what I'm saying. So he they would too. they would put me in a, a center spot like Shaq or something like yeah. that. You know, man, I, my jumper game is crazy. I would put money on my and, and just 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 if we're going jumper for jumper, easy. Like you know what I'm saying. So I love basketball. Where do you where do we go? Where do you go at? Where do you go play? What you mean, like now? Yeah. I don't mean just. I mean lately, I haven't gotten to you know do too much you know get no gym or nothing like that but just whenever i can you know shoot i was actually just thinking Smith about street or something nah i don't be over there but like yeah i was thinking uh, my son he kind of wanted me to uh get the roll away rim and just so we could get out there and shoot because like all of the gyms and stuff been like well now things is opening back up because yeah. of covid but like you know it wasn't no gyms yeah. like that and stuff like that open for a minute so it's all out of fitness yeah but like you know, we used to go down to the Salvation Army in Saginaw, the uh, and, you know, go down there and hoop and you know, Hoyt Park, all of that stuff. You know, so, so you I were, mean, Vest Park, Vest Park. So you were a Saginaw High guy? Yeah, yeah, I went to Saginaw High. Nice. I went to yeah. I grew up in that whole area. We still own property over there on Beachwood. You know, so yeah, it's that's right around the corner from Saginaw. So that's my area right there. Like that's where I grew up at. And yeah. I remember freshman year, we were like. So we'll like they'll have the away team like off on the right side of the field, like way off in that little back That's right back high? right corner. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That back right corner like during half times or some shit. Mm-hmm. And I remember just eating like a fuck ton of berries. Just fuck ton of, <laughs> a fuck ton of berries in this tree, just like smashing them because they were so good. And uh dude was I think who was it? Like, <laughs> Coach Coach Anderson was just like, make sure y'all don't be eating these fucking berries, y'all know if they're poisonous or not. I was like, damn, we already done ate like you four. You done had a whole, you just been. Yeah, we was all smashing them. Man, you like, get sick? No. 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 Nope. You got lucky. Yeah. We never got sick. Just, uh, I remember I got burnt. I got burnt fucking out of play. Sagging on a high fucking receiver. I don't even remember his name. He just fucking caught it right behind me. I'm literally like stretched out like this. He literally just catches it on, over my fingertips. I was like, fuck. Sagging on a high is some beast. I'm telling you. Sports. We used to, 
we, they were they were good, but we used to always whoop their ass. I think it was more or less just because like how the, how big the size of them were. Like mm-hmm. they had maybe forty t- players, we had fucking seventy five. You know, all the time. So it was like we were always rotating. It was hard. Um, with like a lot of the athletes at Saginaw High just because for one, you didn't have a lot of people who wanted to play. You know what I'm saying? It was more of people not forced to play. There was a lot of people like, yo, this is what I have to do. Like, right. you know, especially that environment, you know, over there. So it was just like a lot of people who was just playing. That's why the teams would always be so it wasn't a lot of like it was hard to get like a full team together sometimes because nobody wanted to right you know what I'm saying but that's why they they went extra harder and you know you had a lot of people came out of there you got Anthony uh, yeah. Roberson you got uh, you Charles Rogers huh? you talking about the internet or who you talking about no no just did just like who made it out of there yeah. however you know um let me see Charles Rogers rest in peace Charles Rogers um crazy. You know, uh, yeah, you know, we had a few people come up out of there. You know, shouts out to everybody who came out of Saginaw. Uh, Draymond, Draymond Green, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Shouts out to Renee. That's his um, his wife or whatever. Like, I yeah. went to school with her actually in Grand Rapids. Oh, dang. Yeah, me and her went to school together in Grand Rapids. There's a school called Central or whatever. It was a high school, but it was called Central. And um, yeah, she went there, so that's where she from. Hey, we both went to Central, just in different areas. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah, Jason Richard, Jason Richardson. Jason Richardson. Yeah. So many, so much talent. The Anthony Arnett, he went to uh, Saginaw High. Yep. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yep. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a few people sprinkled around, you know, yeah. doing their thing, whatever. So. What's what's one what's one uh what's one thing that you want people to know about Ron P? I'm genuine. That's it. Like, you know, take away the rapper, take away the podcast guy, take away the entrepreneur. Just I'm a humble individual. Like, I'm very, I like, I don't know, like some people would be like, oh, I'm real or I'm this. Like, no, I pride myself on my humbleness because I can easily not be humble. Right. You know what I'm saying? I can easily shit on people. I can easily flaunt Y'all done heard that fucking freestyle. My yeah. man snapped. Num- <laughs> number one on the charts right now. <laughs> See, I'm just I'm humble with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, even you saying that, sometimes it's hard for me to take compliments. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's another thing about me. Like, people come up to me and just like, yo, yo, yo your song was tight or this and this and that. And it's just like, I appreciate it. But it's a part of me that's just like, inside, like. Still got to grind harder. Like, I'm, I'm just like, thank you. But it's just like, I don't. You know what I'm saying? It's hard yeah. for me to take compliments because I'm just so humble. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's like, I don't know. That's just something about me. Like, I'm just humble. I'm genuine and humble. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not, and when I say I'm genuine, it's just like, I never, ever, ever do nothing that I don't want to do or I don't mean. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you know, being humble and genuine. I think that that's what's gotten me this far and building relationships with people and, you know, open a lot of opportunities and doors just being humble and genuine, you know what I'm saying. So you basketball fan, you've been watching, you've been watching LeBron ball. I know you have. Just past Carl Malone. Listen, yes and no. Number two. Yes and no. I don't. I have lately. I haven't been able to watch. But I mean, I still follow what's going on. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, of like course. I, but like lately, I haven't been able to tune in as much. Like my son, he kind of put me up on game on stuff. But like, I haven't been able to tune in because I've been in like work mode. Like, because right. when I'm in work mode, I tune, like I tell you, I tune everything out. So yeah. like, that goes for music, that goes for TV, that goes for everything. Like, I literally live in like a bubble when I'm in like work mode because between, you got to think, if you... I feel like that's how you get the most, most effective product. You know, because this is how I feel. I feel like when I'm in my tunnel vision mode and I'm blocking everything out, I have to focus on Ron P and my music and editing because editing takes a long time anyway. So editing and, and networking and building these relationships and trying to work on my business. I always say that game that I miss is going to be there. Yeah, I can go back and watch that. Yeah, uh, The song that's on the radio this hour, I can go back and listen to that. That's going to be there. But these opportunities and things I got to do in front of me ain't always going to be there. Yeah, You know, so like, like when I say that I don't, 
follow everything that's going on. It's not because I don't want to. It's just like that stuff. You're is prioritizing. Status. You're prioritizing. You're prioritizing. Like yeah. LeBron is LeBron. He's gonna be there. Yeah. You know, I can go back and look up anything that LeBron did. He's but what you can't, what you can't get, is you can't see that reaction live when. You know when that exactly. game winner at that, that moment, that game winner when uh, Poole hits it and he's a freshman and it goes nuts and you see Houston on the sideline just thinking they're about to win and it's game over, dead right. in their heart. You're That's what like, you lose. <gasps> you, you lose know? that. You lose that moment. That, that, moment. that moment. You yeah. know the excitement. Yeah. I, I'll never forget like those moments when like this is back in the day like when the Bulls and the Atlantic <clears throat> Hawks was going at it and it was like Dominique Wilkins and and Jordan was just back. You know they had the dunk contest like. To watch that as it was going on as a kid, you just like, ah, you know, like at that moment. And it's not the same when you got to go back and watch it. Yeah. After, you know, I feel but, the same. But again, like I said, you know, sometimes when you're trying to build your brand and and, and establish yourself and stuff, like, like I said, you got to work before you can play. Yeah, work before you play because LeBron is established. Ryan Pete right. isn't. Right. You know, so I'm a. I'm 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 gonna I'm get it to it. Soon I'll be able to put my feet up and, and catch the games and yeah. shit. You know, but right now we just in work mode. Well, I feel I fill you in. Uh, March Madness has been happening. Michigan State just lost uh, the other night to uh, Duke. Uh, Michigan. Nobody. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. No. I didn't even know that. Nobody thought that uh, Michigan was gonna do shit. They were considered gonna be the first four in. So like they were just gonna be you know just bounced in the first round. Well, they were uh, they got to be an 11 seed. And Colorado State, they were a six seed. They ended up playing them and fucking destroyed them. So then they then they were playing uh, Tennessee, and Tennessee they ended up you know beating, squeezing out a tough one at the end, number three team in the uh, the ranking. So it's definitely it's definitely nice to see they play uh, Thursday. Thursday I think they play uh, Villanova, number two ranked team. So I love to see yeah. it. You know personally, I, March Madness for me is just like whoo. You know like this is the time of the. You know, See, like, and I used to have that same kind of energy, man. Like, I think... I just try to balance. I think it's just... It's all about finding that balance. And I'm still trying to find it. Yeah, it's that definitely it's definitely hard. The only thing that I do have balance with is my work and my family. Yeah. Like, I can balance that. Yeah. But, like, just certain things that I want to, like I said, just... And, and I'm a gamer. Like, I like the game. I don't get the game as much as I want to. See, I push that to the side. I, I, that was my love, but I'm like, eh, I'd rather enjoy these moments like March Madness or I'd rather enjoy, like... You know, doing this podcast, I'd rather do you know something like that. Like I enjoy those more, right. you know, than I'm, playing. I'm, I'm back on my gaming though, like PS or, or I'm Xbox. A, I, I got both, but I'm an Xbox guy. Me too. Okay, cool. Like cool. we talked about it with uh, speaking of Finisher DG, we talked about it with Finisher DG. This is a little uh, paid. You have to tap in with him. But uh, didn't Finisher DG? He was talking about you know like Xbox, PS3, PS, mm -hmm. you know, PlayStation. And I was like, man, you know, like. PlayStation was really special. We, th we talked about all the games that it should have. Yeah, I mean, I ain't gonna never forget when Resident Evil first came out on PlayStation. Like, classic. Terrified to play it, but I yes. loved it. And then, you know what? I, I will perfect, because I'm a zombie fanatic. One thing about me, like, big, 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 big zombie fanatic. Me and Cher used to write in notebooks what to do if a zombie apocalypse happened. Like, we Damn, so you're prepared for... Listen. The outbreak is real. When I say, like... Yeah, I got a but the Umbrella oh, Corporation, shit. like the whole not like I'm a die hard. What's like, the Umbrella Corporation? You don't know about the Umbrella Corporation? Nah, what Resident is it? Evil, the whole nine. I mean, I guess I've heard. Yeah, of okay, it. the Resident. Okay, the Umbrella Corporation is a corporation that they control everything, like the government. They got their hands in everything, and what's going to end up happening is when the zombie apocalypse happens, because it's going to happen. It may not be like the movies, like uh, or not, you know. I don't give a fuck happen. about no zombies except the motherfucking world that World, world War Z. War Z zombies. Them zombies is the only zombies that I don't that I don't feel confident in my abilities in. But see, that's why it's all about cardio. Yeah. Like I do zombie apocalypse training courses. Like the whole nine. Like I'm die hard. When when it, put it like this, Ron P and the music go hand in hand and Ron P and the zombie situation go hand in hand. Yeah. That's how hard I am with the zombies. One situation. weapon, what are you taking? What you mean, like it, when one, it pop off? Yeah. Oh man, uh, see, it's hard to say. I want my sword like Michonne, cutting heads left and right. Nah, see, the one thing about swords and sticks and things like that, that's only effective when the zombie get to a certain. You don't want a zombie get that close to right. you, right? Because nah, we we shooting, yeah, we shooting everything. We shooting drums, you know, what I'm saying like, 
I don't know, man. Zombie, that's a whole nother. We gotta tap into that. When it comes yeah, to I, like, I like, I like, I like that. I'm a, I'm a zombie. I'm, a, I love this shit. I love. We can talk about that shit for a minute, cause I think about when you, when you get guns. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm thinking like, okay. I'm not just thinking about gun for myself. I'm thinking one day maybe it might be the end of the world and I got six fucking guns so I can load up six fucking people. You know, then I can have, you know, one person with an AK, one person with a fucking shoddy, one person with, an eight, with a fucking M4. I'm over here with fucking dualies, you know, or some, you know, yeah. vice versa. But like, I'm, I need my Michonne sword. That's nah, one thing see, I, I need. I can't mess with nothing like that. Cause, and then one thing too with the zombie apocalypse, like that's why I try to teach You watch Walking Dead, right? Hell yeah. So you, why you don't Hell fuck yeah. with it? Not the sword. She is so I nice mean, she, with it. Hold on, she nice with it. Yeah, she she official with it. But and again, when you run out of ammo, what you gonna do? Oh yeah, I mean you know that's 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 the, the sword, resort. Yeah, you know we'll resort to the sword. But I'm using like, the sword. All I time. just feel like because you got to think a sword is anywhere from four to six feet, right? Yeah. So that means you're within. I don't want to be within six feet to be effective. I mean, I feel like I would not want to be within zombies. Period. Right. That'd be my first choice. But if I were to be with them, I feel like you definitely would have your gun for the backup situation. But for like ninety percent of the time, I guess I'm, I I'm guess using a if, sword. I guess if, if you're in a situation where it's only like one or two and you'd rather use the sword opposed to wasting bullets, then cool. Yeah. But if the shit just popping off and they all outside and shit like that, because I get a workout in, I get a workout in until we fucking get take out fucking sixty zombies. That shit yeah. gonna happen one day, bro. We need to actually just jump on this podcast and just do a whole segment on just on Halloween. We gonna do that, bro. yeah. And just just the whole nine. We get some zombie memorabilia and shit up there. Oh, it's gonna be lit. Whole, yeah, yeah. That shit gonna. It's gonna zombies. I, I do believe it's it's definitely gonna happen. You no, know, see, back in the day they said the government was trying to inject soldiers with different things so when they get killed they could re be revived and, and still keep fighting. Kind of like an EpiPen 10 times over. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Now, again, when it comes to the government, I don't, you know, you got to be careful how you address shit. Right, right. But, you know, it was something like that that they was working on back in the day. Like, this was years and years ago, or whatever. And it makes sense. You would think, like, if our soldiers get killed to be able to revive them, shit, we, we going to win it. Because Quick revive, we, just like you know, off the Stuff like that, but shit goes south sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's. That's like I said. That's a whole. That's a whole. Podcast, other, yeah. Dude. We gotta. We gotta <laughs> that shit is deep. We'll be so far down. We'll be fucking screaming up for the rope. I'm telling you. Yeah. For real. People be like, oh, you got cameras. Who you think gonna break in your house? My cameras is not for people breaking in my house. Right. That's for zombies. <laughs> <laughs> I watch my monitors. Make sure ain't no zombie on my porch or crazy crackhead. Like same thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you remember the bath salt thing was going crazy? Oh, my God. And people were eating faces and shit like yeah. that. Like, so when you say zombies, it's not necessarily the movie zombies. It's just somebody who's not, dead in the brain and yeah. not focused. You know what I'm saying? So, yep. Yep. Yeah, we, uh, I watched this one video. It was, it was crazy. It was literally a, a call, all caught on the ring camera. It was literally a dude came up with an AK, fucking knocking on the door, pounding on that shit. And dude's like, he's got a, another buddy behind him, like, circling, trying to go around the outside. He's like, open the fucking door! And I was like, man, this dude incriminated himself. He's all fucked up, you know? Like, if it, if anything were to happen to anything revolving of this person who he's at the house like that, you know, with, it's like, he's definitely fucked. Right. He's definitely Especially fucked. on camera. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, just, just shit like that. You see some wild shit. You see some wild shit. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Episode 70, Ron P. Special, FGP Feeling Good Podcast, the podcast your brain wants. I'm here with my man, Ron P. Say it, say it for one time for the people. This is Ron P., your host with the most, your favorite podcast host, Ron P., watching us. And we live on here, and we getting it popping, and yeah. Make sure you go check them out, man. The music, the podcast, the Snapchat. The, the, the content, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's the content. He, yeah. he gives you a very, very great inside look of just how to fucking work. How to work, how to network. This man's always doing it. There ain't no reason why you shouldn't be on, on the fucking Ron P show fucking trying to get on and, you know, promote your shit. Man, it's forget Ron P TV. It's all about these, <laughs> these Ron. raviolis. These Ron P raviolis. Bro, like, you you understand? See, this this is gen this is a genuine reaction. Like this ain't for the show. Like this ain't like, again, like I said, it's genuine. You know, 
like you don't know how like excited like I'm geeked to go home and show share to you. Like Heck yeah. Like this is this the little see it'd be little stuff like this that make me like happy. You know what I'm saying? It's not like the like oh he gifted me a diamond chain and stuff like it's just like and then the thought that went into it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it's the little things, bro. Like this, I know my man fucks with ravioli. I know it. You know. See, I, I honestly, I mean, cause I'm hungry. I want to go home and bust these open, but hey, I really don't even want to bust these but open. That, that's the thing. It's like it's perfect for a for a, a beautiful TikTok to be made and 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 tagged uh, hey, tagging am, Chef Boy RD. I think I am gonna put these on TikTok. Yeah, Y'all follow my TikTok, Ron PTV. If you don't know, I'm gonna make sure I share this exact picture of all his uh, all his pages. Everything will be uh, shared and tagged. That's mine too. Yep. Can I have my camera? Yep. That's you. Yes. Ron PTV. Ron P. Media, Ron P. Hey, I appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, you want to leave? You want to leave? Uh, leave us with a special uh, anything for the for the fans of uh, last words. I just want to say, uh, stay true to you, all of my artists out there. Stay true to you. Don't lose yourself in making music that you think everybody else want to hear. Stay true to you. It's, you can be successful and not rap about stuff that you don't live. You got Drake. He don't rap about gangsters, shoot him up. You got Kanye, who don't shoot, shoot him up and stuff, and they the biggest artists out. So just stay true to you. I know you. you've seen that that documentary. Yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. I was mad it was only like three episodes. It says like six, but it could have been more. No, it was only like three. And really? They, yeah, it's only three, but then they had like little like extra stuff, like three extra little videos and stuff. Like, oh. But yeah, no, it was three on Netflix. But yeah, you know, just stay true to you. Be, you know, stay humble. And, and, you know, be respectful. Enjoy life, you know. That's all it's about. Enjoy life. Uh, family of all, you know. That's what it's all about. Yes, know? sir. And shouts out to this bobblehead right Nicole. here. And Nicole Smith, y'all. Yeah, shouts out to the bobblehead. Yeah, she, she's doing a thing. She's, she's, she's looking good just standing there. She's sitting there. I like she She's scary in the face, pretty, pretty in the waist. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, y'all, make sure you go check them out. I'm gonna drop all all his uh all his all his outlets because there's a lot of ways to contact him. You know what I'm saying? You Hello. You don't need his contact number. You don't need to hit him up directly. The radio is calling. But either way, y'all know what to do. Feeling good podcast, the podcast your brain wants. Episode seventy in this motherfucking thing. Hello. We got Ron P. Yeah, no cap TV man. Hey, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Oh. Thank you for coming. No, I appreciate it, bro. Yes, sir. Yeah. Until next time, y'all know what we to out. do. Y'all know what to do. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be putting some shit up out there. You know, he's, episode seventy. He's gonna we become. Did it. He's gonna become performing at Tri City Vintage, y'all. So stay tuned. Oh, heaters, heaters. Hey, I'm gonna get that in there. Fuck it. Hey, make sure you check him out. Peace. <laughs>